Blog Talk Radio. I've always felt different. I've always seen things, but when I tried to express them as a child, I was always told to ignore it. There were people that I didn't know that came to me and said, I have this message that I keep getting that I have to deliver to you. All of a sudden, out of the shadows, a homeless man just jumped right in front of me, and he said, I'm a soul just like you. I love it. I wanted to understand the universe and who and what we are and what are we doing here. We're all part of this amazing soul wave tapping into each other. This was a major life changer. You are a light. You have helped me a ton. Thank you. You've given me the courage to live more from my soul. Millions of people are awakening. So wake up with Michelle Miche. Be pleased to hear the best-selling authors and experts in the fields of cutting-edge self-help, personal growth, metaphysics, and spirituality. The soul path of awakening. Understand what living awake is. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the program. Millions of people are awakening. Are you part of the awakenings process and unfolding of soul alignment? Uh, If you're listening to this program, you definitely are having your awakening, soul awakening. Oh, gosh, good to be here with everyone. If you're new to the program, I'm your host and uh, pilot here, Michelle Mache. Uh, We've got people in the chat grounding the energy. We've got people on the phone lines, and we have people listening later via the archives. Um, We've got a great group of um, individuals that come to this program. So if you're new, welcome, welcome. Really um, wonderful to connect with you. Uh, If you're new to the program and you're in the chat and you want to um, just hang out there, that's great. If you want to interact or ask questions from the chat, you do need to set up a profile with uh, BTR. Blog Talk Radio. I believe it's just your name. They send you a link, and maybe you put a avatar of some sort. I'm just having my decaf latte here. It's one of those kinds of mornings here in SoCal <clears throat> by the beach, and it's kind of chilly, actually. Um, if you did have a question or a comment, or you wanted to get on air and uh, just share what's happening with you or say hi, that number is 347-539-5122. That's 347-539-5122. And press 1 on the keypad. That lets me know that you want to get on air. Okay, so I'm going to be uh, taking callers. A uh, couple shout-outs. Some of you have left some great comments on my blog, uh, soulplayground.life. Um, I do a monthly energetic tune-in, psychically and with the guides, channeling, and then looking at the numerology of the month. And then I do a new moon post and full moon. My guides told me last year, you know, it's interesting because I did a lot of goddess ritual um, Wicca back in the day. Yeah, I've tried this about everything to kind of just, you know, I'm an equal opportunity, you know, on my path to see what resonates. Um, And especially when I was studying comparative religions, we had to have experience in different religions and forms of religious belief, doctrine. So anyway, I recommend that to anyone. You really learn a lot. Uh, But recently, my guides really guided me back to the moon cycles and really following the moon cycles. Um, I even have an app on my phone that howls. I love it. Howls at the moon, at the different phases. Um, And I knew, in fact, I'm going to be doing more workshops on this because there really are times when we align. um, It's really getting in touch with Mother Earth. Not in our emotional nature, but what needs to be revealed. And it to me, I just have found it to be a real reset and realignment. Um, you know, establishing a different flow that somehow feels more cosmic or you know interconnected, interpersonal in nature. So anyway, and I try to do some of my workshops. Uh, it's weird. For years, I did my workshops around the new moons and full moons, and that was totally guided by my guides because I didn't really plan it. Now I'm really looking at it intentionally. Speaking of that, a yummy tele-workshop that I'm going to be facilitating on the 18th is releasing the ancestral karma and healing generational wounding, Okay. So we're at a really, I'm going to dive into this a little bit with our talk today and what I got from the guides, the channeling session that I got. 
how important this time period is. I mean, it's all important, but it's even more poignant and potent right now. And so that's another thing. If you understand the cycles, you know, whether it's your own personal cycles, biorhythm, your own for women, your moon cycle, men have you have cycles too, or mood cycle, time to go more within. When we really align to those cycles, we're aligning more to our spiritual nature. And this is why all great religions have that or systems of thought, whether spiritualism, spirituality, you know, um, shamanism, you know, Hinduism, Buddhism, you know, Jainism, you know, ancient, ancient Catholicism had it as well, or Christianity, I should say, not Catholicism, um, in the mysteries, in the mystic traditions of the, like the Kabbalah and the Tree of Life. Uh, tarot helps us with cycles, numerology. So it's the symbolism of the collective unconsciousness that's constantly being fed by us and eventually updated and up-leveled by us. But one of the things is to make changes in your life, real changes, and this is what I work with people as a soul coach and intuitive, is to align to the cycles, your own personal cycle, and then where's your entry point in the universal cycle? There's an intersection. And in the Taoist tradition of the I Ching, that is the basic premise. So it's knowing, and, you know, I work with a wide range of people, and I would say the people that I work with that um, have businesses or, you know, have, are serial entrepreneurs or startup or let's say they work at, you know, Apple or Oracle or, you know, I don't know, IBM, you know, or they, you know, started companies, uh, well-known companies, uh, but due to confidentiality, I'm not at liberty to say, uh, they all saw a cycle. They all saw an opening. They felt something. They saw something, a trend, a good stockbroker, um, you know, commodities traders. It's, it's the cycles. But the cycles are natural. You know, anybody can tap into it. Whatever is your proclivity, whatever, wherever you're formatted in your life, look at the cycles. What are the cycles telling you? It's a, there's a revealing because everything is living and breathing, Right. Consciousness is living and breathing and takes different shape and form. And so we can understand more about ourselves, where we're at, where we need to go by the cycles, by the seasons. You know, you have an apple tree, but maybe the the apple isn't ripe yet and you're going to eat it. It's going to be hard or avocado, no matter how much you want to eat that avocado. This happens to me all the time. I get avocados and I'm like, oh my God, I really want this avocado, but it's hard as rock. And then maybe a day or two, Later, it's still, and I've done this before, you rush it. Oh, I just really want to eat it. And you open it, you cut it, and you realize, okay, one part was soft, had softened a little bit, but it's too hard. You know, I can't put it in my salad or put it on my toast. It's too hard, and then it doesn't taste good. So it's learning to embrace those cycles. So I'm going to be doing a, a lot with that. I do have a post uh, just just came out today on soulplayground.life or soulplayground.com. Um, but also, I think Friday it's coming out is the new moon post. But you can go back through the posts and see what was going on and see where you're at. In some ways, all posts, like all readings, are timeless because there is no time. We're in this continual unfolding. I do happen to work a lot individually, personally with my clients and in my workshops. Timing, I happen to be pretty gifted with psychic timing, universal timing. Um, but in saying that, you, you can be to a certain degree, okay, because things will still be unfolding and it may take a little longer or shorter time. And some of that is dependent on other people, dependent on synchronistic timing with the other people, and sometimes it's our emotional state. That's why I do a lot of workshops and teleworkshops with inner work, shamanic inner work, hypnotherapy, NLP, trance work, regression therapy, past life regression, to get those various timelines, those various expressions of ourselves, And it's all created through vibrational connecting, right? Um, a complex of vibrational frequencies that manifest through emotions, feelings, thoughts. So it truly is changing our thoughts can change our world. Um, I do want to give a little shout-out here 
this has been like such a blessing for me. This last month or within two to three weeks, I've had um, three of the, my clients, three people that I worked with for a, quite a long while and still working with, have books that were just published, that just launched. Um, I had a couple clients sell uh, one a movie script, I guess it's called, one for TV, one for a, a movie. Another one that got an amazing uh, job with a very uh, high-level position with a, with a uh, really well-known and very creative tech company. So, um, yeah, so I'm kind of reveling in their, their um, celebration and feeling very happy for everyone and, and fulfilled. So um, I just want to give a shout-out for Desi Bartlett for Your Strong, Sexy Pregnancy, Lori Bregman's book, Mama Stay, and Jill Thomas's book, Tales from the Trance. She dives into past life regression, hypnotherapy. Um, all of them have worked and trained and studied with me, and they are um, very gifted with what they do and part of the plan connected into the Oversoul's spirit guides, spiritual hierarchy, and really living a life of service and fulfillment. So if, if any of those books resonate for you, um, if you're interested in um, any of the personal work that I do, or you, you can email me to awakeningspodcast at gmail.com. That's for guest suggestions, topic suggestions, email questions, or to get on the list to keep in the loop, or you can also email info at soulplayground.life or michelle at soulplayground.life as well if you want to find out more. Um, I do a, a weekly Soul Insights, which you can be a part of as well, and then the monthly. So I'm really into supporting, tuning in, seeing what the energy is. You know, I do it through working on my own, you know, myself, my own inner work with my guides, with my teachers, uh, with my mentors on this dimension and others so yeah and there's been doing a lot of inner work so i'm wondering if how a lot of you are feeling um as well it's been a time really to to go deeply within and those of you that have been going deeply within 12 12 the synthesizing number it's 12 12 right now at least in the northern hemisphere so it is that synthesizing um where it's all coming together to create a new way of being, a new species, a new expression of us, and which is kind of what I wanted to dial into. Um, also want to remind everyone, stick around for the second half of the program. We have Jenny and Seth of Dynasty Electric back, and we're going to be dialing into vibrational healing, sound healing, um, as well as some of Jenny, um, her healing work that she does with sound and, and color, working with the vibrational spectrum. So uh, Tammy is saying, I love that you called out their amazing successes. Yes. And you know, Tammy in the chat, you know Lori and Jill. Yeah. So um, the other people I don't know to, to mention, you know, I, I, you know, I tell my stories of myself and my clients, people that I've worked with or workshop participants, but I don't name names. But if they're promoting something or have said, yeah, share my story or tell people, I love to share what people are doing. Because especially writing a book, it's not just the writing of the book. It's the inner work. It's what it takes to feel that you, to move past your fears, to realize you have something to say or something to share. Which is reminding me um, what I do want to connect in with everyone about, and I will be getting to callers. Again, that number is 347-539-5122. Press 1 on the keypad. Um, I've had a few people <laughs> is always asking what's going on or what's happening with the energies right now on the planet or they're feeling stuck or there's a lot of delays. I got to tell you, it is a new energy pattern. And again, you don't necessarily have to be an astrologer, but you can just, I like, I like to distill whatever I'm doing into something that's an easy digestible format, kind of like an algorithm, right? So even if I'm writing about astrology, you don't have to know all the aspects and study that. You can understand more of the new age that we're 
co-creating or the new paradigm and the new emerging consciousness by understanding the planetary influence of Saturn and Uranus a bit more. Okay, that will help you with timing. It's still sequential past, present, future, but it's also synchronistic. It's also leaps, exponential changes. You know, a lot happening, then nothing. Start, stop. Okay, it's the combination. Um, and if you look at it, that's how we really are anyway. So there's this whole balancing, right, that's taking place. This is a very potent time, especially the next three to four months between and, and now, between now, it actually started in April, between April and I would say August, September, and then into the close of the year. But that August, between now and that September time period, there is an intensification of energy and a laser light focus on what is working specifically in life and what is not and what is your truth, okay? And how can you not only live your truth more but speak it? How can you vocalize more? So many of you are going to be waking up with messages, like I have something to share, I have something to say, I have something to write, you know, or I never liked wearing red. Why did I wear red? Everybody said I liked red, so I'm gonna, but I love wearing blue. You know, or everybody loves my hair this way, but I don't want to. You know, I like it this way. I want a mohawk, you know, or I want long hair, and I'm of a certain age, and say, you know, I don't know this thing. Sometimes people say, oh, women should ha- shouldn't have really long hair. Well, maybe, or maybe you're going to cut your hair off. A lot of you are going to be feeling this restless nature of something new is coming in. Now, we've been in this sandwich of energy. And again, I'm going to look at it a little bit astrologically lightly, but I'm also going to bring everyone back to 2009 when we, well, 2005 when the converging flow happened. That means everything all at once. People waking up, us seeing our shadow. We see it play out in, you know, in the politics right now. There's a lot of uh, polarization that's meant to happen to bring awareness. If we don't, polarization is like an extreme of pain, okay? When you have pain in your body, it makes you aware something's wrong, okay? I need an adjustment or, you know, I twisted my ankle or I'm so tired, I can't barely get up, something's going on. It could be just that you need more sleep or more downtime. You know, it could be you sprained your ankle. It could, you know, whatever the situation is. So we're in this polarization process within ourselves as well. It's not just externally with other people. The next three to four months, we're in this major time of mirroring. And it's also to recognize our sameness, but also our uniqueness and our individuality. In other words, you know, it used to be in the old paradigm, we kind of just, there was a lot of sweeping things under the carpet and just to get along. In other words, oh, somebody's trying to be nice to you, so just let them be nice to you. But the new paradigm that's being grounded through the, the earth energy, the element of earth, and specifically now Taurus as it's um, Uranus is in Taurus, it's, it's highlighting what we value. In other words, and it's in a way, it's like going back to being childlike, right? The child that says, no, I don't want that. I want this, <laughs> right? Uh, I can remember as a kid, oh, that's so nice. Just take it. Well, I don't want that. And it goes to how we're supported as well or what's meaningful in our life. And it's being self-loving enough, compassionate enough to be able to, to share with people or say, you know, it really helps me if you support me in this way or this is what I really want to do right now or this is what I'm focused on. So it is, you're going to see more and more instances of bringing your individual preferences in, but in a way that still allows you to remain a part of the group, a part of the whole. So not in isolation, like I can't get my needs met with this person or this situation or they don't understand me, but okay, you like marmalade on your toast, I like raspberry jam, okay? Or I like peanut butter, smooth, and you like peanut butter crunchy. That has to be okay. And so there's going to be a lot of internal really listening, hearing, and acknowledging yourself. 
as well as us listening, hearing, and acknowledging each other, right? That, oh, someone may like something different. You know, so it, that, that Aquarian age is about our uniqueness. It's connecting more to the soul, our individual likes and preferences. And the love comes in where we can see that. And again, imagine the ramifications of this. It's, it's so changing our relationships that the children coming through later on and adults won't have to deal with this. They'll be so supported. It reminds me when I taught school and I taught at some private schools, uh, very good schools that looked more individually at the child. You see, our society isn't based like that. You know, I worked in a regular school system. They're, they either skew things, they really try to skew it for the middle way, the, the middle group, which is fine, but the problem is that some people might be taking on information a lot quicker or a lot more expanded or maybe they're more academic at home or they just love learning or they just came in kind of with a more of an academic or intellectual or love the education. Some may, you know, need to see things demonstrated or, you know, acted out. Maybe they don't, just listening doesn't help them or they're more visual. So you're going to see more of this tailoring or or skewing things in a way that supports the individual as much as possible within our group processes and eventually within the collective or the mainstream. But we first have to start seeing it and recognizing it within ourselves to say, you know what, that doesn't really work with, for me. Or that, that's not how I think. Or that's not really what I said or meant. You know, or I understand what you're saying comes from love or you care about me, but this is really how I'm taking this or this is how it's affecting me. And we've got to be okay to bend. You know, we, we don't always know not only what's right for each other, but sometimes for ourselves. We have to go in a, a little inner journey or a little inner mission to figure things out, that's part of the unfolding is the looking within, the inner journey, right? So you're going to be seeing more of this. I, I see this with this friend of mine who's just amazing. She's, she's done a lot of inner work with me. She's very conscious. Um, her ch- Their child, you know, um, and the grandmother, also very conscious, very awake, very aware, is just amazing. I will never forget, um, I had told this person, I said, well, you probably need to meditate more. It would be good for you to meditate more. And this was a few years, I think, when the child was like four. And literally, somehow, some way, they were in the living room, and my meditation book, Meditation for Everyday Living, fell off of the shelf and landed on the floor. And the little girl came up and picked the book up and handed it to her mom and said, Mommy, you need to meditate more. And I, yeah, she's a star seed. I really, I, I look at her and I go, oh my God, if I'd had those kind of parents um, as a star seed, you know. But you're going to see more people awakening. There's the posers that aren't really, that have just read some books. But you're going to see a lot more people kind of opening to their gifts, their next level of gifts. That's what this is, a lot of what this is about, is opening to that next level of gifts and insight and understanding. So this new moon, it, it's, it's, the new moon there's going to, is aspecting Uranus and Taurus um, and, and, of course, the sun. So it's, it's bringing out not only our values, our principles, and beliefs. And, again, I, check out on Friday my post on soulplayground.life. I get into the esoteric meaning of Taurus, the whole rule. Or it's, yes, it's, it's ruled and influenced by Venus, but also Vulcan, which has a lot to do with shifting simply from the human focus of security and needs and acquiring into the soul focus. So we're having to look around and see what, hey, what do I want to carry on this earth journey with me? It's really about earthing, literally earthing, and earthing or grounding or anchoring or embodying. It's a lot about the body because Taurus has a lot to do with the earth, but also the physical body, embodying these higher frequency energies or insights or awareness or our soul connection or the realization of our soul or living more through our soul and less through conditioning, less through wounding, 
and less through the ancestral energy that's been passed on to us. There's dreams from our ancestors. I'm going to get into this in the workshop on May 18th, Saturday, May 18th. Again, if you want information, just connect with me, awakeningspodcast at gmail.com, or go to soulplayground.life, and you can just sign up there uh, for the blog and the MailChimp, and you'll be notified. But we have to find out, are our dreams, our ancestors' dreams, are we to be carrying on a lineage, or do we want to stop that? Do we have some new insight, new inspiration, new direction? So this is the time to do it. So in some ways, the energy is slowing down if you allow it, especially for the month of May, to really look and feel, you know, at, the, at, at these very questions that I'm posing to you, you know. Does this way of relating, do I value this type of person in my life? Do I value this type of relating, this type of interchange, this type of work, purpose, or livelihood, or way of living? Is it suiting me on a deeper level? If I peel the societal norms and shoulds and have tos and this is the way to success and all this, you know, even if I peel away the whatever, spiritual, self-help, whatever, systems, doctrines, principles, or beliefs, the scaling. Now, that scaling is going to happen more two weeks after the new moon when we have the full moon in Scorpio. It's going to be shining a light on what's hidden, the occult of the universe, of the world, of the earth, and the occult of us, our occult roots, what's, what seems to be esoteric. So we call this the externalization of the plant. It's the externalization of the soul more and more in the spiritual, or, sorry, well, it's all spirit, but in, in the denser physical or earth plane. Make no mistake, look at it. There's books now by politicians and commentators, The Soul of the Nation, Getting Back the Soul of the Nation. I think one of the people, I think it's Joe Biden, I I saw something as I was channel switching, was talking about something of getting our soul back, the soul of America. See, to me, it doesn't matter. Republican, Democrat, you know, Biden or Smite or whomever, whoever is Buttigieg, I don't know, whoever's there, Elizabeth Warren, whatever. It's not about the people. What I listen to is the message. When I see on MSNBC the word synchronicity, let's look at the synchronicities that are happening. When John Heilman on MSNBC, some show on it says namaste everyone welcome to the program and namaste that's what we all need to start looking at not the people that are saying it because they're being used their higher self is slipping through a lot of them don't know it there some do some of them are awake some of them are an awakening process in a in a various way but it's the instrument and that's part of what the this next level of awakenings is it's the judgment card in the tarot do 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 wake up, you know, it's, those of you that know the story of the Wizard of Oz, it's the curtain comes down, and then we see we're these little tiny bodies called humans, but we're much more, okay, it's not the smoke and mirrors, it's what makes the smoke, what makes the mirror, it's the consciousness made manifest, so it's this pulling back the curtain, Okay, that's what's starting to happen. And so that's the train. You, if you choose to, get, I suggest you get on board and look at what people are saying, what is being revealed that they don't even know. And that's where your signs are, your confirmation, you know, of the, this great awakening that's happening, this navigating the awakenings, the soul awakening. And it's not so much the soul is awakening. It's the earth plane, the game on the earth plane, is awakening to the aspect and the idea of the soul and integrating that into everyday living. That's the navigate, that's, that's the process. It's anchoring those energies and creating beliefs and systems of thoughts and ideas to support it to live a different game. So we're shifting the focus and that's part of the awakening. So it has to happen to us individually to then impact creatively and co-create it, Right. So join in that is what I would suggest. You know, again, it's updating and up-leveling. It happens all the time. 
you know, there was a time women weren't, you know, CEOs or starting businesses or entrepreneurs or, you know, there was a certain image of women or a certain image of children or a certain image of a certain type of man or a certain type of woman or a certain type of job. Now it's all interconnecting. Right, we had Gail, the guest Gail Minogue on a few weeks ago, who's a commodities broker, quite successful. But she also does numerology, so she uses, she studied, you know, numerology. She studied astrology. I believe she uses numerology and astrology. She uses it in her trading, but she, but there's the technicals, right? The fundamentals and the technicals in trading, as a stockbroker or a day trader or stock trader or commodities trader or broker. It's all, when I talk to my clients and friends that are in the financial world or even in various businesses, and I'm, I'm talking more from a, as a spiritualist, as a psychic channel, as a medium, and, and seeing these trends, they see trends too. We compare notes. So I invite you as things get a little more intense and compressed energy that you take some breathers. I've been doing a lot of inner work, self-care, whatever you want to call it. I've been loving it, but I'm kind of ready to come out now a little bit more. Um, Is take your downtime, meditate, journal, whatever that means for you. You know, is it Reiki healing, energy healing, whatever supports the body? Is it energy work? Is it body work? Is it chiropractic? Is it walking? Is it earthing? Is it running? Have a combination that suits you. And then pull out and look at the trends. Even just say, oh, I do know more. I'm more awake. I'm living more authentically. Oh, I keep hearing this word synchronicity. Or now I hear this, people talking about the soul. Or there's a car called the soul, the Kia soul. That's coming from somewhere. It's downloading the information. It's downloading the frequency of that. It's anchoring that energy in in various arenas and areas of our life. And so it does show we are on the right track. We are on the right path. Now it's like how do we align more to it and become more a part of it? Okay, we're going to get to callers right now. I'm taking the first caller. Hello, Hello, and welcome to the program. Hi, you're on air. Hi, Hi, this is Tasha. You've got to turn your radio down, please. Oh, I left out of here. I hear it in the background. This is Tasha calling from California. Hey, Tasha, welcome. Hi. Um, I, I want to see, can you tell me what type of uh, connection is Shondell and I? Like what type of uh, soulmate or whatever you want to call it. Right. You're looking for? Yeah, I'm trying to see like what type Hello? of uh, soulmate is Shondell to me because I have like a, uh, I'm, I, I'm like real connected to him and I'm trying to figure out like what kind of soulmate is he to me. Oh, okay. Like, is he a karmic? Is it a wound man? Yeah. What kind of thing are you supposed yeah. to be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hear you. Okay. Yeah, because I'm so connected to him right now. And I feel all his emotions. We just good friends. See, that's happening more and more, even just with friends, quote unquote friends, because we're connecting with people that are more of resonance uh-huh. to us. Okay. They're more part of our soul, not just soul tribe, but soul wave, the actual wave that we come in on. So we're all oh. drawing that more in. Yeah, so we're going to be more empathetic, more feeling. Now let's see what's coming up for you. Okay. What's the first name, Tasha? And what? Oh, Shandell. Well, you're more awake or aware than him, right? Okay. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes now one of the things I want to share with everyone is some of the things that are happening is we're getting, we're being, those of us that are awake more are getting um, helpmates or we're helping them. We might be attracting people that are more materialistically inclined or maybe aren't as advanced or connected emotionally. They're more wounded. So there's this interesting pairing. It reminds me of in school when we'd say, oh, can you help so-and-so with their homework or with the math or with the reading because they know a bit more. Now, these other people that you're being paired with, Tosh, they still have something to give us and share with us. 
but I feel with this situation, I'm not sure. I feel like there's some emotional blocks with him. Does that make sense? There's some kind of where he's not as open. Yeah, um, because he's he's going feel, through it right now. Yeah. So I feel like you're um, – the reflection is showing just how far you've come and what you know and that you're able to hold the space for someone. But the idea is oh. to hold the space for someone but not get drained and not get caught in. People need to do their own work. I, I really suggest to people, and it doesn't have to be working with me personally or individually or my workshops or teleworkshops, but find more tools. I am seeing people – and I'm not saying, Tasha, this is just you, but I'm getting a hit, a download. I'm seeing a lot of people, like, just getting readings or, or asking friends for help or spending hours on some kind of problem or issue, especially in relationship, when they really need inner work, when they really need therapy, when they really need a coach or a mentor. And there's so many affordable ways to do this nowadays. But I feel for you it's to hold the space to be there, but not to – your lesson in this is not to get pulled in, Okay. Okay. Okay, so I was picking that All up right, right with what he's going to. You were, yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right, thanks for calling in. Okay, thank you. Yeah, really important. Talk, thank you so much for calling. Because a lot of the old paradigm was about self-sacrifice. You would listen to somebody go on and on. It was all just also think of the type of therapy, mostly just cognitive or inner child, which we need a good chunk of that, a lot of that. But we have to start looking at the transpersonal, at the higher self, at the soul, at the, at the soul level. Using mediums that go beyond the rational mind into the subconscious or the collective unconscious, even the collective unconscious or timeline therapy. It's a lot of what I do. Let's get the information from the past self, the future self, the pre- you know, let's work, let's work with a lot of different modalities. So, Really think about that. If you're finding yourself troubled or you keep complaining or you have the same problem over and over or there's problems always in relationship or getting along with people, you know, or you find yourself in a karmic relationship or what I call also six house relationship in the chart where it's a lot about healing, don't put that on your friends or on, your, or on yourself. You know, find a support a system. Find a group. Do workshops, teleworkshops. Find a mentor, a teacher, a therapist, a soul coach, a spiritual life coach, a guide, that, that will make your life even more sacred. That's honoring your passage, your process. That's honoring your journey where you're, I'm worth it. I'm going through this journey. We all need, I have it myself. I have people I work with. We need a guide when we're going through this kind of situation. But what you're going to see is a lot of people that they're feeling the energy. They're having an awakening. It's a beginning, a baby step in their awakening and some of them just don't want to do the work of looking, really looking within and, 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 ha- and working with someone. There's this codependency or this reliance. So many of us empaths, healers, or teachers, we're being taught the difference between trying to fix or rescue or be codependent, but we feel it. You know, like Tasha was saying, we feel what they're going through. It's hard. It's hard not to intervene sometimes. Hello and welcome. Hello. You're on air. Welcome to Awakenings. Hello. Hi, now. It's Amala. Hi. Hi, Amala. Welcome. Good to hear from you. Hi. Um, I have an associated question like Tasha did, but um, I've done a lot of the work. I mean, like, not that she hasn't. We're all on different paths. We're just learning from other people right. and learning from ourselves. And um, I did some major digging. Um, a lot mm. of stuff going on, but nice. I feel absolutely amazing. So I'm wondering where if you see somebody coming in for me. I love your okay. apology. Time. And here's the thing. Just because you've done a lot of work, what I want to sh- kind of clarify is yes. very often we're drawing in or being paired up with people that haven't done so much work. Yeah. And that's so that we sh- – right? That, right. So yes. that's so we shift our own pattern on it of not being the right. helper, the savior, the rescuer, the fixer. Right. Because we – right? So, yeah. So let's see. Oh, no, what's coming up? Yes. Getting that divine car to part. We're getting it. You know, we're getting it. Um, okay, so feel, keep focusing on your spirituality and go, being around spiritual happenings, spiritual centers. 
or yep. where your spirit feels uplifted. It could even be music. Let's see. Is she gonna, it shows you're going to be meeting someone. I'm going to see if I can get a timing on it. Yeah. See, the other thing, too, for us that have been doing a lot of work, it's also being able to draw someone that can handle the heart opening. That's the next step. Yeah, because a lot of people can't ha- can't handle the full heart opening, right? So yes. I do feel someone around you, and I feel kind of watery for some reason. I feel like they could be Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, or have a lot of that in their chart, or they're they're very either you are they're very in touch. Yeah, I keep getting a yes, but they're not telling me timing. Now it could be. I keep hearing three. So where are we? May. Yeah, three to four. Yeah, so. Yeah, there it shows. It's a it's a partnership. So if it's not before the summer, I'm going to say after the summer when these retrogrades clear up. Okay. Um, but there is somebody there. There's There might be somebody before in time of Leo. So I don't know if this person that, because this is just a quick read, if the person in the time of Leo, um, I'm hearing for Sir July turns into something more or you meet someone and then boom, the other one comes in. So I don't know if there's a transformation there in the dynamics of the relationship or you meet someone kind of what I call the opener, but it does, it definitely shows you closing issues yeah, you've worked on the self-worth. It shows a new chapter. Yes. And there'll be stability and permanence in it. So, yeah, you're drawing in that divine counterpart for sure. Absolutely. I think, yeah, Michelle, that's can, I just, ready. can I just comment on what you said that's so interesting is that it's it's finding when your heart is completely open a match to match you with that light opening. That's interesting yeah. what you said because that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, like, I had a okay, situation. I'm open. I had a situ- yes. Yeah, I know. That's the next thing because, um, I mean, that love, that true love beyond the earthly is so, I had it, it's so powerful. Some yeah. people can't, they don't realize it's the new, the new thing, the new game. They just can't, their, their heart. So, yeah, that is, that's the next step. Can you, yeah, drawing that person in. But I do feel you're going to. I do feel that they're there, and there's something very partnership. It's a very good even partnership is what I'm hearing. Good. All right, you know Anna, what? let's get this posted. What, Thank me. you yeah. so much. You know it's We're... so worth it. Thank you. Okay. Uh-huh. God bless. God bless. Hello, and welcome. You're on Awakenings. Hello? Hello, you're on air. What's your first name? Maggie. This is Maggie. How are you, Michelle? Hi, Maggie. I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Love your show. Thank you for having it. Thank you. Oh, love hearing that. I love so hearing. my inquisition is... Just, yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. What were you going to say? Tell me. My inquisition is my husband and I are looking to... Uh, we're wanting and we're plan, planning on uh, moving away from where we currently live. And every time that we either will visit a location or an area of the country or even do research, it ends up being more like the spider's web. You know, we kind of like like certain yeah. places, but as timing we try off. to as we timing try to off. figure out... Not there yet. Timing what? Oh, the timing is off, the not there? The timing is off. Yeah, okay. not there yet. No. You're kind of going through what so many of us are. You're, For one thing, you're getting, you are starting to really get in touch with your... Um, I don't want to say blueprint, your next level of unfolding and what it looks like. And there is a move. Um, I feel it's going to be a large move, a distance. You know, it could be even international. I feel a large move, a a huge lifestyle change. There's all the pieces aren't there yet. So you've been feeling the puzzle. What you're just supposed to be doing right now is experiencing different places and something will hang in your mind more. But it's okay. you, it's the time isn't there yet, so it's visiting it, it's spending time there, it's thinking about it, and then let it go, let it go, let it go, okay. because I feel like it's going to be some place where you went and did research. It's going to research, It's going to come back around, is what I'm hearing. 
Okay. That's the thing is, you know, we, we figured, well, let's get a plan. You know, we'll visit places and, you know, think for the future and where. And then, you know, we start investigating and, and reading and it's like, oh, no, not this or maybe here or maybe that. And it's it turns into a spider web. It's what, uh, but what you're saying is is all the timing. It's not, not yet. Yeah, that's why it's not hitting. And I guess okay. I feel it's going to be someplace that you visit. I don't feel you can do it intellectually or over the web. So narrow things down and just go for a vacation. Don't look at you're going to stay. You know, I had something years ago, and I had since I modeled and acted, you know, obviously I was in Hollywood for a while, then I was in London, you know, I've been all over, Chicago, New York. And I went through this phase where I was doing a lot of deep, you know, inner work, and then I retrained in, in, in London, you know, London University, and then um, in hypnotherapy, NLP. Anyway, I did all this retraining, and I landed back with my family in San Diego County. And those of you that know that, that area, there's Irvine, uh, I think it's called Spectrum Theater. I could not go in past that area. If I had to come up to, in, uh, to do workshops, um, and actually I did a couple of commercials and things up in the L.A. area, I would get a panic attack. As soon as I could feel my aura had become so expanded, I was so expanded, I just couldn't do it. I'd just bump into, you know, and I'd be in the hotel, and I'd be like having to take all these homeopathic remedies and meditating because I'm having a panic attack. Well, I was doing this workshops, and I was like, oh, God, I can't live there. I could, you know. Then one day I come up to do a workshop in Malibu, and I'm, I drive past the spectrum, you know, it's Irvine and Irvine. Mm-hmm. And I notice, and I, I drive it a mile, and I go, oh, my God, my aura is still expanding. I didn't, it was fine. I thought, God, that's interesting. Then I drive in through Santa Monica, and my heart is just opening, and I felt so peaceful and comfortable. Something shifted. So I clearly wasn't meant to be up here. And then I said to myself, God, I could even live up here. I went to Malibu, did my workshop, and then I heard this voice you are going to be living here. You're, you're going to move. Oh, and I had for two or three, yeah, I had for two to three months all these dreams about different people I was meeting and places. And when I moved back up here in the west side, Santa Monica area, I met these people. I went to these places. And it, was, it happened quickly. While I'm sharing this with you, Maggie, it was within two to three months of the dreams, of the experience, something shifting. So I don't know if it's going to be that dramatic for you, but I feel like it is going to be an aha, or I really like this place, or we like this place, or we keep coming back, we keep thinking of this. But it's going to be a physical. It's a physical connecting is what I'm hearing. It's not going to be by online research. Yeah, we we, we had just thought about, um, you know, kind of planning. So if there's real estate involved, you know, you can go ahead and start uh, acquiring Mm -hmm. that. You know what's happening? Mm-hmm. But that's all, that's all, I love that. I love research, but that's all left brain and it's all the human. I the see. soul is about experiencing it. I always say like the soul will have you go to San Diego to get to China. Or if you're in China, it will have you go to Canada to get to New York. You know what I'm saying? It, it's all about resonance. So you guys got to kind of get out of your head on it. And just go as a vacation. The other stuff. Well, we have been visiting real places, estate, but it's it things like that. That's it. That's where you're at right now. That's okay. That's where you're at right now. Yeah. Much appreciated. All right. Well, keep us posted on this journey. Sounds amazing. Definitely. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Hello, hello. and welcome to Awakenings. Hello, hello, hello. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, hi, Michelle. Happy May Day. And my question okay. is, when do you see a job, even if it's a temp job, coming in? Okay. And what's your first name? Stacy. Okay, Stacy. Stacy, Stacy, job, temp job. Well, it's interesting you say temp because I feel that's what's going to be first. Um, it seems like something kind of quickly. So don't lose heart. Oh, we're see, we're there some... Yeah, somebody's calling you back or calling you in. Let's see what. Let's see what month? Let me ask what month. It could even be May, end of May. I 
Yeah, you just need something to kind of manage your energy and your time to focus on drawing something else in on a, of a more consistent or bigger nature. Yeah, I've been trying, but, but getting, you see some. Yeah, it seems like um, it's. I don't. I don't think it's going to be in your field. I feel like it could be working with people. Mm-hmm. Um, even like I don't know reception or something. I don't know. I feel like there's something with people. Uh, restaurant. It's not something you normally do, but it's something that seems to. It, I, they call you back. It, it falls in your lap. They call you back. Part of the reason is I feel like there's a synchronistic connection or connecting that's meant to happen. Um, it's not far though. I'm getting like a media, I'm getting you, you talk to them or you put in the application and then they call you back or it could be verbal. And I also feel like it's close to where you live. You might even be able to walk is what I'm hearing, or it's not a long drive or on transportation. Um, so don't give up hope or heart. It, it, it's, it feels like it's something pretty quick. You're not going to stay there forever, but there does seem to be something that comes in, and it also uplifts your spirit is what I'm hearing. Okay? Whoops, I think we lost her. Oh, we lost her, we lost her. Okay. I think we have time for one more. Yeah, they dropped. Okay. Hi, hello, welcome to Awakenings. You're on air. Hello? Okay. Hello, you're Hello. on Awakenings. Welcome to the program. Hello. 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 Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Michelle? Yes, I can hear you. Michelle? Oh, okay. Yeah. Hi. How I hear you? you. Hi. Ah, boy. Who is You're this? not going to believe this. My name's Rob. Huh? And I'm an ancient numerologist, and we have a past life connection. Okay. And I was nice. told to call you because we're supposed to work together. I work with the Ascended Masters. Okay. Nice. Oh, good, Tammy, you can hear so me. I, I just want to see if that resonates with you. Well, off the top of my head, I can't say it does or it doesn't because I'm not in that frame of mind. I'm tuning in for people and then trying to get people through as much as possible to then get to our guests. So that's what I would have to say with that. <laughs> you can always send me information, you know, let me know more. Okay, well, hello? I, I certainly hello? will. Yes, okay. I, I certainly Take care. will. Okay, bye bye. Hello? Hello? Okay, we seem to have a weird connection here. Okay, let's get one more in. Hello? Welcome to Awakenings. You're on yes, air. Yes, hello. Yes, hello. My name hello? is George. Can you hear me? I can hey, hear you. George, can you hear me? How's I everything? I can. I guess we had a. I'm doing great. I, I loved your show today, by the way. Awesome. Oh, thank you so much. Um, well, my question is, I've been out of work for a while, and I went to see what you saw in regards to me getting employment or starting my own thing or a mix of both. Let's see. What's coming up for George? Well, I for sure get starting something your own thing. It does show work. I feel May, the, the changes I see for you are more in the time of Gemini. So I'm going to say, well, end of May, June, coming up June. So pretty quickly. And probably something, um, it's working with people, could be communication. Also, something could be local in the neighborhood as well. Kind of similar to, was it Stacy? Um, but you also do esoteric stuff is what I'm hearing. You're wanting to bring that part of you more um, out as well. I think you're falling into to that time period I'm seeing. There seems to be, again, this chunk with these retrogrades. There's a lot freeing up end of August, September. 
something for you the end of this month and into June. I'm hearing specifically Gemini time. Your ability to communicate, to reach others, and to the universe to, for your needs and wants is granted. So I do feel there is a job coming for you, but I also feel you're going to do something on the side or on your own. You're also good with hands. I don't know if that's healing or working with things, crafting, something. Well, well, um, well I'm a Reiki master. Oh, well, there we go. Reiki. Okay. So. There, and see, and I said you're a bit of an esotericist. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah so when yeah. you said with the hands, I was like, okay, she, she got it. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to do more of that. So, yeah, start that. Start that now. You, the hands, the healing hands, you're meant to work with your hands, and but you're going to be communicating more. So it could be classes, workshops on it, or, or just healing people, not just individually. I see group work for you as well. So it could okay. be a blog. It could be YouTube channel. It, you know, so you come in as the communicator. You're not – you're a healer. But you also come in with the ray of uh, healers, teachers, educators as well. Okay, so well, I should look for in. a job, just go off on my own and, and, and Well, you jump know, on you it. can do both. The soul doesn't look at that. You can do both while you establish your Reiki practice. But I okay. feel you are, if, yeah, do both. Eventually, I feel your practice is going to take over. I, I, but, yeah, by all means, do both. But don't forget about your healing practice because spirit's really pointing you in that direction. No, definitely. But you see me getting a, a job between May and June, you said, also. Correct? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. awesome. Now, this is for you, George, and other people. I call them transitional jobs with people because part of what I work yeah. with with the people I work individually is a cycle of transition and change. Um, it's through... It's the same as the grief process. So when you get a transitional job, it's 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 kind of the no-brainer job. There's very little that you have to stretch your brain or train. So yeah. go for that because your main thing, right, is is getting your practice, your Reiki, your healing work is what I'm hearing. Yes. yes. Stick around because we have uh, Jenny and Seth coming from Dynasty Electric, and they both do sound and energy healing, and Jenny oh, also great. does Reiki. Yeah. Oh, great. So stick around. Oh, awesome. Okay. Okay, talk Thank to you, you later, George. Take good okay. care. Okay, bye. You're so welcome. Bye. Woo, I love it, I love it. Everybody making some changes here. Okay, so let's see. I'm trying to see who's on the line here. Okay, so it is our second half of the program. We have our uh, Awakenings Dialogue today with Dynasty Electric. We have Jenny and Seth back with us. Um, they've been called or spiritual and intriguing uh, by a recent article in the Forbes magazine. Um, they do sound bath, sound healing, uh, energy healing, as well as working with color. So really working with the, the higher frequencies for healing and expansion in one's path. So want to welcome on the program. Hello, welcome. This is Jenny. Thank Welcome you. to the program. Hi. Hey, good to have you here. picking up my call as well. Um, yeah. Do you see any work changes for me also? My name is Nisa. Oh, Nisa. Okay, I thought you were a guest. Is a 917. Okay, I'm not seeing. Okay, let's look okay. at Nisa then. Okay, let's see. Well, I first heard April, May. Did you have something that came through, but you didn't really want to do it? April, uh, did I? Didn't um, nothing really like a hit, but there were some somebody interested in in the in the location that was yeah. not very safe. Okay, okay, because it showed something. But it was wasn't like they you, hired. But then me. you didn't take. Okay, but but you weren't interested. That's what I'm getting. So I'm right. just trying to tap into your mm-hmm. energy as quickly as I can. Yeah. Okay. Let's... Oh gosh. Good luck with that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Here's the thing I'm hearing to tell you: it's easier to get a job when you have a job. So if you can, um, be a little more open in the next mid this month on because I feel like there's going to be something else coming to you. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah. 
Yeah. It's, They're saying um, that this place might close down where I'm working okay. at right now. Yeah, see, it's showing more June. Okay. Well, you're okay where you are right now, but yes, there is something yes. else coming in for you. But, you know, I would lightly start looking, but it does show you're okay for the now. Yes. I'm very busy. Okay, thank you. Oh, good. You're welcome. Much peace. Okay, I think I'm going to add a call. You guys, hold on, because we have to do it differently. I don't see um, Jenny and Seth in the queue. So I'm not sure what's happening, and Sadie's Internet has been down, the producer. Technology stuff, they're fixing something. So um, just bear with me. We're going to just uh, put a little call in here. Putting a little call. Okay, let's see. Boy, I just love technology. I just love it. Let's see. Let's add a call here. Can you hear us, Jenny? Yes. Okay, I'm hoping that people can hear me on, on the show as well. So I'm going to add another call. Yeah, I didn't see you in the queue. No, and then it's funny you just got a 917 call. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Okay, Tammy, thank you. My sound engineer can't hear me. Okay, let's try it now with Seth, right? He's coming on board. Yes, he's currently at our mountain cabin in Crestline, California, where we okay. hold our retreat. Okay, I have a 909. I love this. This is the technology. <laughs> it's like, let's make it happen here. Okay, let's try this again. And everybody can hear us. So we're on live. We're on live with um, Jenny DeVoe. Hello, everyone. It is so great to be here on Awakenings again. We were huge fans of the show, and we just – Love being guests and uh, just being a part of this whole community. So thanks so much, everyone, for listening. And thank you, Michelle, for having us on the show. And we love having you here. And I love your sound baths. I love your music. We're going to get into that. I just want to get um, Seth um, on air as well. And uh, we're going to just flow with this because that's kind of what we all do, right? (laughs) Beautiful. Okay. Oh, it's called. great to let's, be here. Thanks so much for having us. Let's, let's merge these babies on. Jenny's here. Seth is yes. here. Dynasty yes. Electric is here. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. Here. I love it. So Seth is in the mountains somewhere where you have your retreats. Your, uh, one of the places that you hold your sound bath retreats. Yes. So he's ho- holding that nature spirit <laughs> for us. And, and Jenny, you're somewhere, and I'm somewhere else, and everybody else is somewhere. <laughs> yes, I'm in Amazing. Venice. Oh, you're in Venice too. Okay, good. <laughs> yes. Okay, everybody can hear us. The chat is saying, "Thank you, Tammy. You can hear all." Okay. Thank you, Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh gosh, it's so cool. I mean, the technology is so much better. I remember doing podcasts back in the day with Skype. I love Skype. I started with them, but you remember all the calls. Now it's all from the little iPhone here. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you, uh, Tam. Yeah, everyone in the chat. Yes, thank you so much. We connect with everyone. All right. So, um, wow, you guys, welcome back. And it looks like you have some great stuff coming up. So I definitely want to um, tap into all that you're, you're doing And want to talk a little bit, you know, right now there's so much up for people. I think just even like things like 
sound baths, you know, yin yoga, meditation, qigong, reiki, were those, you know, back in the day were kind of like luxury, like, oh, that's kind of cool or interesting. I'm finding it more and more, not just with myself, but other people. It's like, no, this is like maintenance. This is like coping tools. This is like part of my routine, you know, it becomes a part of a routine to keep us um, sane. <laughs> How's that? Absolutely. Yeah, I really feel, you're right, Michelle, I completely agree that there's not only more awareness, but more receptivity mm-hmm. to these um different alternative modalities, well, traditionally called alternative, um, yeah. you know, ways of, of healing the, the self on the body, mind, and spirit level. And that especially when used in conjunction with more traditional methods of uh, medicine and, and other things, it, it really helps the process in such a deep way and really is not only you know, something you can do to help, I think it's a necessity in terms of our uh, balance and, and harmony uh, as beings and our, and our health overall. Yeah, and there's a lot of research, uh, or, you know, quite a bit. There seems to be more and more on the benefits of these types of complementary modalities or complementary medicine. Um, I know psychiatrists, psychologists, but also specifically cardiologists, because I've worked with some, are big into these alternative, you know, the doctors that are recognizing a lot has a lot to do with lifestyle, and we have a lot of, you know, control or input into our health, seem to resonate resonate more with these modalities. Do you find there's more, you know, because you guys are, you, you've got the science behind it with what you're doing. You've got the, you know, musicology. You're coming from, from that space as well as uh, healers. Do you find that there is more research that's validating the benefits of, of sound healing, music healing, color therapy, Reiki, energy healing? You know, interestingly, there was just a study published which, uh, indicated uh, an exciting development in the treatment of Alzheimer's disease, where by mm. using uh, specific frequencies and playing those frequencies and certain light patterns to mice who had uh, in Alzheimer's, they were actually able to eliminate the Alzheimer's from the brains of those mice. Now, it, it's still on the level ah. of working with laboratory animals right now, but I really see, uh, since theoretically each disease has a certain uh, frequency or vibration that if we mm-hmm. can harmonize that diseased or in, incoherent or dis, uh, dissonant frequency with a harmonious one, then we can eliminate theoretically any disease. So I feel like we are just at the point with science where uh, Western science is beginning to accept the wellness paradigm of uh, instead mm. of, uh, and I think that's why we see all these modalities available right now of yoga and sound healing, meditation that uh, before we were simply going to the doctor when we came down with a a certain disease. And what we uh, are learning, uh, I think just from the practical research that we're seeing on the day-to-day level, is that people's lives really benefit from going for a walk in nature, from meditating Mm -hmm. on a daily basis, and from going to a sound bath. And that people really see the results in their day-to-day lives. And so I think even beyond the laboratory experiments, which are, I think, exciting and we need to do a lot more of, I think we've really just, uh, we're at the tip of the iceberg right now, so to speak, where I feel like we know just a little bit about the science of why uh, some meditation and sound healing are so effective. And I think if if the universities and institutions dedicate more time and money to it, I'm actually certain that they'll be astounded by the results. And I think uh, just to bring it back to on that day-to-day level, the experiences that we have when we practice yoga, when we meditate, and when we experience sound healing, uh, they're just so powerful. And then we know Mm -hmm. it just shows us on a practical level that we know that it is having a wellness effect for us. And uh, I like to say it's tuning our body like a musical instrument, tuning the mind, mind, body, and spirit uh, so that we can maintain that aura of wellness. Mm. Now, Seth, you touched on something, and I've heard you because I do go to your sound baths, which I love, um, and you 
mentioned this before, but if you could expound on this. You, a couple of things you said. One, you said about that disease or, you know, this kind of displaced feelings or whatever is causing that the dis-ease um, or sickness or has a, has a uh, vibrational component. It, it resonates to a certain level. There's a certain vibrational frequency. And then this att- attuning, I guess what is, how would we be able to know what frequency disease is on or illness or conditions or whatever we're going through or just malaise? you know, or not feeling well or emotional upset. Is that important to know? And then is there a counter frequency that helps that, you know, or what is that attuning? And, and part, probably part of this question is how does it work or why does it work? You know, it's interesting. There has been a certain amount of research into this area to try and determine specific musical frequencies which we could use to treat uh, specific conditions. And uh, there actually has been a certain amount of of luck with this, and there's been a number of audio tapes that have been released over the years of to to treat specific conditions. Uh, There's still it's still in its infancy in a sense that we need a lot more data, uh, and we need a lot more participants, and we need a lot more universities and larger institutions uh, just providing more data, and so we can really uh, get to understand the harmonic frequency of disease. Uh, I think there is also a subjective component where Mm. each one of us will have a slightly different reaction. And even if our body is manifesting the same condition as another person, uh, for example, cancer, that our uh, particular disease cells may be actually vibrating at a a different frequency than another person who might be afflicted with a similar but slightly different condition. And so I do think that uh, on a, there is a subjective and individual component that each case, while we might be able to draw general conclusions, uh, each case is going to be slightly different. And so mm-hmm. I, I really suggest uh, uh, self-experimentation, that the self can become a laboratory, and particularly with meditation and sound healing, that uh, we can safely and simply run experiments, if, for example, with depression, that I mm-hmm. really believe music has a, such a powerful effect on mental health. And so mm-hmm. when we are listening to music, we find that music which puts us into that elevated, uh, peaceful, uh, contented uh, state of mind. And we eliminate the music which we find makes us agitated or uh, is discordant or is offering us negative subliminal messaging. That We actually need to understand uh, our music in particular, as a kind of a food that we take in through our senses and then we're processing it subliminally. And so mm. we can simply run a, an experiment with any condition we have by finding the music which resonates for us. And, and again, in the case of depression, finding the music which elevates our mood and then making playlists so that we're constantly feeding ourselves that music which puts us into that contented, joyful, and happy zone. Uh, And then in the case of physical diseases, uh, you know, for example, another study uh, that relates with music and disease is uh, that patients uh, with Alzheimer's disease, uh, this is beyond the mice, this is human patients, uh, that they respond to very little stimuli with the exception of their favorite music that they loved before they were diagnosed. And so an Alzheimer's patient can simply be treated through listening to their favorite music from their childhood the music that brings back those memories of parties or love affairs or friendships, different uh, positive and joyful memories that they may have. And so we can apply this even if we're not afflicted with a neurological disease, uh, simply by listening to our favorite music and making sure we weed out and eliminate any music which we find is causing a negative response. And that that is a basic way to create a, a wellness program for ourselves. We can keep that music playing in the house if it's classical or or jazz or different types of music have a more of a a relaxing sensation and and create that wellness environment. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like mental, emotional, or body-mind triggers, it sounds like. And for some reason, it's getting past this, like, cognitive barrier and and tapping in. I don't know if that's rearranging the – our energy pattern, the molecules, is, or is it pushing something out and bringing something in? There's some rearranging. Um, it sounds like it's going. Go ahead. 
I, I, was, I agree with both of you. It literally sounds like we're dealing with just energetic states or patterns. You know, if the, if mm-hmm. depression is an energetic state that maybe needs some kind of activation or inspiration in the form of either music, yeah. color, or crystals. And then something like cancer where the cells are almost overactive, it's like wanting to create even more space in the healing environment so that it... Uh, the energy can 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 calm down, and that it allows um, some kind of healing frequency through either light or sound to infuse that space with uh, mm. a, a sort of balanced molecular environment. That makes sense. And another, just to add to that, uh, music. I think, in particular, even more so than light, since it has the power to actually penetrate uh, the physical barriers of the skin bones and muscle and tissue and and it actually literally does change us on a molecular level when it passes through us Uh, and so music uh, has this advantage of as opposed to surgery or even drugs of just being purely non-invasive and so it can just be uh, safely practiced we don't have to worry about uh, negative side effects uh, or Mm -hmm. uh, you know surgeries or, or drugs that we can just uh, safely vibrate a condition. Since we're, we are made of energy and vibration, music can just safely move through us, and literally change the vibration of the cells, and then just pass out the other side. And it's the, only, uh, the only danger really would be we just don't want to listen to music in, in a too loud of a manner, uh, as that oh, can damage okay. the, us on a cellular level uh, in the inner ear. Um, so... Uh, beyond that, there really is uh, it, there's no threat of dangerous side effects uh, with music mm-hmm. as a treat. Well, additionally, too, even if you are in a space where you do need to go through with that operation or chemotherapy treatment or something of this nature, I think these energy medicine uh, techniques can can help uh, your operation to go more smoothly or in a more successful yep. manner. So it can also work in tandem if, if you really need to, you know, do both for, for whatever your situation is. So I think it definitely helps those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It sounds like it's like obviously penetrating the skin, the body, it's, but it's going past that barrier of what we think or thinking it through almost like we don't have to think about if I, jump in really cold water, I have a reaction. Or if I'm in a warm, you know, aromatherapy bath, I have a certain reaction. I'm wondering, the two of you, do you see more of a couple of, this is kind of a compound question, do you see more of a rise of these modalities, especially sound baths, and people more receptive? Because I'm just wondering if as we're all, a good chunk of us are ascending more, expanding more in our awareness or awakening, however, you know, we want to term it, becoming more empathetic, if we actually are even even more receptive to these modalities now and potentially into the future. Any thought on that? <laughs> I feel like to some extent I've been in a little bit of a Los Angeles bubble okay. <laughs> where, yeah. where and I feel like there's a lot of receptivity to not only all of these modalities but nutrition and a lot of other things. And okay. I think sometimes I just have an assumption that these sorts of things are just, um, you know, a part of regular culture in in all areas. Um, So to answer your question, I mean, from the amount that things have expanded in terms of receptivity to sound baths, for example, even since we arrived here in Los Angeles three years ago, I think it's it's taken a huge leap (laughs) in terms of uh, people being interested, wanting to um, add sound baths to their, you know, regular weekly routine or being receptive to, um, you know, the possibility that, that by engaging in these activities that they can be helped through, you know, some kind of emotional situation or something physical or spiritual. And, you know, really having incredibly positive feedback that that is, in fact, the case. So, you know, I I'm actually would love to take this out as well and really branch out from just here. But from what I'm seeing around us mm-hmm. in this environment, there's definitely huge expansion. Okay. Uh, I, 
I agree. Yeah. It's really wonderful to see so many people interested in sound baths. And with the art and science of sound bath in particular, uh, both the intention of the sound bath practitioner and the receptivity of the receiver and the audience are, are very important because it's very subjective, a very subjective experience. And mm-hmm. so if somebody goes to a sound bath and really doesn't believe that it would have any benefit at all, they may experience some benefit still, but they're much less likely to receive any benefit from it simply because, as, as you were saying, Michelle, about sort of like a, a, a doorway is closed in their mind. And mm-hmm. until that doorway is opened, it, it's just a wall has been constructed. So any vibrational benefit may just bounce off of that wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, they still may receive some benefit just in the sense of basic relaxation, simple enjoyment of listening to music, uh, simply just by slowing down the rhythm of breathing and of their heart, they may still benefit. But the more receptive they are, and then the greater their benefit can be. And when they can enter into advanced visionary experience, they can focus on a particular area that is perhaps having some pain or some disease and allow that to move through them. Uh, and then back again to the intention of the, the sound healers, that the more uh, pure their intention is in terms of offering a space for wellness and clarity and harmony. Uh, and that combination with that in, in increased receptivity, uh, it just, I believe, continues to increase the power uh, of the sound bath experience. And, and the more that it increases, it just continues to just get better, as, as Jenny mentioned. Um, mm-hmm. In the last three years that we've been practicing sound baths in L.A., it's really just been remarkable uh, how much more open people are growing to the the whole concept. You're right, Seth, when you mentioned that um, in terms of, of a healing or energy medicine practice, the person coming in desiring some level of healing is a totally active participant in the process, just as much as the practitioner. And I think that that's a really important point to bring up it, with these modalities, you have to go in um, actively participating in your own healing because ultimately you're the one doing the healing that the practitioner is helping to create a space for and really going on a journey with you. But your willingness and receptivity is an extremely crucial part of the process. Makes sense. It reminds me, I know, and. In- Western or traditional medicine, allopathic medicine, there is a lot of research. I don't remember if it came out of Mayo or Harvard, but um, especially with people that have had or have um, potentially terminal or life-threatening illness or more serious. Um, but the, the study went through all different kinds of illnesses or conditions. And they did say that the, the patients that were more active, more participant, asked more questions, took control more, you know, maybe that was extra supplements or changing their diet. Um, specifically, what was interesting was asking questions more, being a little nudge, you know, pain in the arse, <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. tended to heal. The, the ones that were more participating in their healing process tended to either cope better or completely um, heal. So it's interesting you're talking about that active, being more participant. I love that word, the participant and receptive. So there yeah. must be something that goes on energetically, molecularly, in the body-mind system. There must be something that goes on when we are more participating, you know, in our well, own healing. Yeah, I, I agree, and I think that's part of the breakthrough I've had recently in some of my private sessions is that aside from just having, you know, all of the tools and, and you know, the different things I use in a session – I've really been opening up to not only um, holding space, but really allowing um, for the process to just move through. In other words, Mm -hmm. if I'm just allowing for the person to discover what their healing is by partly holding space instead of just doing something for their healing, a big part of the sessions now is just being And in those states of being, you know, they're receiving messages about past lives visually. Mm -hmm. And then in in those ways, when when I do actually speak, the speaking is actually much more channeled information. 
And then literally there's, there's space in the room for uh, molecules to spread apart and, and, and open a little and allow for healing frequencies to come in. And so allowing the person needing healing to heal themselves. Mm. And just to add to what Jenny's saying, um, the, uh, from the conventional Western uh, perspective, that recently a study, a major study came out uh, analyzing the behavior of doctors and their relationship with their patients. And there had sort of been a view previously that doctors should detach themselves from their patients and view them in a sort of a clinical and sort of a cold manner as to not get too engaged with their disease or with their pain, as mm-hmm. the idea being that then the doctor would not be taking on the patient's condition and overburdening themselves. And it, the doctors who performed this study were actually shocked to learn that the exact opposite is the truth, that wow. actually exercising compassion for their patients actually was a healing experience more so for the patients and for the doctors and that the doctors who had a more empathetic and more compassionate approach towards the patients actually suffered from less burnout, less depression, and less of the, of the serious medical problems that doctors themselves face. And so just to hear Jenny talking about it on, on the energy medicine level, uh, it, it's also we're seeing this uh, backed up by the research in, in conventional medicine as well. Because wow, you're really on sense. a journey. You're on a journey with a person you're working with. I mean, for me, that's what it is. And I understand the concept of maybe clearing energy after a session and, and, and not taking things on. But the the relationship is continued throughout the month or the months yeah. or the years that, that you're working with someone. And it really is a journey for me, too, because it's somewhat of a reflection every person I'm working closely with on a continued basis. Right. Now, Jenny, tell us a little bit about the modality that you use. I know you do, um, pers- you, you, you both through Dynasty Electric do the, the, the sound bath and that type of healing, and I know you bring some of the Reiki in. What do you do individually? What are your private sessions? Um, well, you know, re- just one generally. of the things, yeah, generally there's a component of sound. There always is crystal bowls usually, sometimes the Tibetan bowls and, and chimes and other things. There's usually a crystal component depending on uh, what particular crystal energies I feel someone may resonate with. And actually I've really been enjoying the color therapy aspect of, of the healing sessions. And partly why, so when I first um, created the color room uh, at Mystic Journey where I do the sessions with color, um, I was aware of the fact that, okay, even if you don't have your eyes open, you're still absorbing color information through the skin and the pituitary gland, and there is some awareness of when a color shifts. But what I've started doing with some of my clients, this one in particular who, who had cancer, we were spending the first maybe first part of, of a session where I would just be sort of listening and holding space. And then eventually this aspect of the session would sort of evolve into this almost eye gazing meditation where we would both stop talking and the color would either be static static on like a blue or pink, but then would um, sometimes shift into other colors. And what we were discovering is through the color, our ability to sort of perceive each other's fields and to open something we've been calling a portal sort of evolved wherein we would sit there without words, but then information would be coming through and then healing ultimately. Mm, Beautiful, beautiful. Now, you have, just in our remaining like a minute left, I do want to um, let people know what you have going on. I know you have some um, healing sessions that are coming up. Those people that are in the L.A. area, West Side, Santa Monica, Venice, or just all of L.A., or you can drive up from wherever, San Diego, Powell, I don't know, wherever, Riverside, wherever you're um, 
Santa Barbara. On Fridays, you do at, uh, the sound healing, the sound bath at Mystic Journey. Um, however, you do have um, some retreats, I believe, that are coming up, or a retreat, something with movable fees, and something at uh, the Mile High Retreat that's local. So if you can talk a bit, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you and what you have coming up, that would be great. It would be milehighretreat.com for information about the retreat. But if you visit Dynasty Electric with a K.com and go to events, all of the information is there regarding Moonlight Movable Feast and the Memorial Day weekend sound bath at Mile High. Okay, so the Memorial Day sound bath, that's, um, of course, the end of May. And that's yes. at milehighretreat.com. Okay. Yes. But everything is also on your site. Um, Correct. Let's spell that for people. Dynasty Electric, D Y N A S T Y. E L E L E C T R I K dot com. Okay. Yeah. We have a lot of people that just listen, and you know, just in case you're having to, you know, you're forwarding and then you're backtracking so that you can hear it. rewind. I guess whatever it's called. Oh, you guys, this is great. You have Come back again. I'd love, um, and sometime we'll play your music. You'd sent uh, some um, oh, as it's well. It's so wonderful to speak with you, Michelle. Thank you so much for having us on today. Oh, yeah, thank you. Amazing. I learned so much. I love both of your energies anyway, and your sound baths are just amazing. Um, so expanding and, and healing. But I also just love hearing the background of what you share you know, a little bit with the, the technology of it and the, the intention and motivation and, you know, the system of it. I love, and I know our listeners love that too, that just eat that kind of stuff up. Because it's so interesting. And like, you don't know this unless this has been your, you know, field of study and research. So it's, it's quite fascinating um, and also inspirational. So thank you so much for sharing, both of you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. We really enjoy your program. And and thank you, everyone, for listening. Have a great rest of the day. Take good care. Talk to you later. (laughs) Bye. 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 All right, everyone. Bye, Jeff. Bye, Jenny. Okay, we were uh, live with Dynasty Electric. You can find out more information by going to dynastyelectric.com. Uh, they do have an upcoming two retreats. Uh, one, I believe, is in their retreat center in the mountains. And you can find out more information by going to dynastyelectric.com, D-Y-N-A-S-T-Y-E-L-E-C-T-R-I-K. So at the end of electric, a K instead of a C. Wow. Phenomenal. Fascinating. Thank you, Tammy, in the chat. Really enjoyed it. I did, too, as well. Thank you, everyone, that came in the chat to hang out. And all of you that called in and also co-created in the chat and also by the phone, um, by your questions and comments. And thank you all that sent in email questions. And always, big, 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 big thank you to all of you that uh, go to my YouTube channel. You can either go to Awakenings with Michelle Mache, Soul Playground, it'll send you to the same link or um, just Michelle Mache. Uh, check out, I did do a new pick a card there, how your life is improving, how your life is getting better and in what area. So tuned in with the guides, uh, did a little bit of psychic channel guidance on that. And it's uh, timeless and time stamped. Again, for all things awakenings, um, if you want to get on any of the lists or you want to find out about the upcoming workshops and teleworkshops, you can email me at awakeningspodcast at gmail.com. Uh, go hang out at soulplayground.life if you want to check out my blog or any other resources there. Um, I think that's about it. Let me know how you're doing. Always love connecting with all of you. Such a gift. And again, as always, continue to shine your light, share your insight, and of course, keep awake. Awakenings broadcast every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Pacific Time. Archive shows available on iTunes. For continued awakened conversations and insights, join the Awakenings group on Facebook. And check out Michelle's blog at soulplayground.com. And keep awake. Are you awake?